I can't even stop. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the next episode of the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. And I'm your host, Supreme Decisions. And for those that can actually see, we have a special guest and his name is Mark. Say hello, Mark. How y'all doing? All righty. Well, one of the things we're going to talk about today is Mark is actually someone I've been working with for a while on many different fronts for a bunch of different things. And one of the things he wanted to talk about today was some of the responses he's gotten from pretty much the help and kind of what it is that he's experienced from the help as well as how he sees things a little differently now. And I'm going to let him kind of introduce himself and then we'll kind of get into what we were here for today. And Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, uh, I am, uh, uh, I'm, reti I'm retired from the uh, U.S. Army. I was a major and uh, it had a great time, great time in the Army, uh, met a lot of great people and uh, I retired and uh, now I'm here in El Paso and now unfortunately I find myself going through a divorce and that's going to be one of the main things we're going to talk about. Uh, it's, it's going to be one of the main, it's, it's one of the things that out of it, of what I've seen that I want to share because I don't believe many people understand what's really happening to them as they go through the divorce and it was eye-opening to see it. Okay, because that was actually one of the things that, you know, I hate to, hate to actually kind of toot my own horn because a lot of the things that I give people, it's from experience. I have gone through an, an eye-opening divorce and it was one that it was definitely not planned, but it was prepared for and it still went left. Um, even in the context of doing that, I've learned the aspects of things that the the other side, as far as those that are, that's protecting the women for the most part, because whether we like it or not, I'm going to give you some numbers. And the numbers are going to actually illustrate the simple thing of how the courts are slanted towards women when it comes to child um, custody, how it's slanted towards women when it talks about the divvy, what do you call that, divvying? Division of divvying Yeah, the division assets. of the assets. And how even when a woman loses, it is very disproportionate to what a man actually receives. And even in the context of having a prenup, a signed document, which was an agreement <laughs> between both parties prior to the marriage, how most of them are taken apart, not by legal means, but by force and pretty much lack of money. So one of the things I wanna talk about is, I wanna say it was, it was funny because when I was going through this originally, I saw that the divorce rate actually had dropped from 50 to 45% when you're including 2020, well, you know, 2020 and 2021, I actually thought that was hilarious. But when you talk about the remarriage rates, for women, it actually cuts in half. For men, men actually get remarried after being going through a, a horrible divorce at a rate of 60%. But there were less than three divorces per 1,000 people in 2018. Now, nearly 50% of all Americans aged 18 and older are married in 2017 compared to 58% in, in 1990. The remarriage rates dropped, the first marriage rates decreased, and the divorce rates for men and women under the age of 35 declined. So that means most of the time, the younger folks are not really getting married, and if they are, they're not really getting divorced early. Because a lot of times you have, a lot of them, they're called a seven-year itch, or you're going through, what's, what's that, the, that, 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 do I still have it stage? Right. You know, um, and both parties go through that. Now, 25% of parents with children living with them are unmarried. So that's a high number. Because generally we don't see a lot of commingling couples. Generally you see 
a woman with a child by themselves, or occasionally you will see a man with a child by himself. It would, it's very rare that they're even together in the same house and they have children. But I'm, I'm, I'm actually showing him some. The divorce litigation cost adds 300 to 600% of its cost of the divorce. So it actually triples or actually sex, what do you call it, sex tuplets? the actual cost that you would pay for a divorce. Now, here's, here's the one that I actually hit him with. Most couples with an average income, well actually, damn all this, cause I actually remember the last one. The one thing that actually was funny to me was the, the um, CDC had a, um, I guess they did like a poll going through finding out people that have gotten a divorce and they come through up until 2020. Men that got divorced over the age of 40, they lose 65% of their income in the divorce. That's a huge number because you're left with 35% of your income, regardless of what it is. So if you have 50,000 as they were using as a number, you're losing 65% of that. So now instead of 25 or 50 uh, 40,000 you are now in a range of $18,000 that you're living on per year understand this that same genre which is women which they're losing 35% of the times they're only losing 45% of their assets here's the thing could I actually use um, this as a joke Britney Spears when she got divorced from Kevin Federline and that was actually a running joke he actually got um, spousal support, which a lot of women thought was unfair because he wasn't working the entire time they were married, yet Brittany was making tons of money. Brittany had two children. Kevin got custody of both of those children. He also got child support for both of those children, which again, women got upset about. Well, one of the things that was funny about the whole situation was he did what the average woman does. He got um, <coughs> spousal support or alimony, he got child support for both children. He then took the children back to Brittany. He still gets that money until he gets remarried. Now, one of the things that most people have no clue of is even in Mark's situation, the devil does not, the beast does not change its procedures for the most part. I told him going into, you know, what, the situation was what was going to happen and he's like the average person hey i still love this woman i want to make sure everything's good take care of i'm not trying to fight this is what i'm willing to give i actually told him you might want to cut some of that back then as you, you see his face for those that can't see you might want to cut that back he didn't just have to tell me cut it back I was like, no, let me give this. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it like, look, this is what we're going to do. I'm like, all right, Richard, I trust you. And it became, I was like, okay, if you want to give something, let's find a starting point. Because the, the whole point of it is going through any negotiation, there has to be a starting point and a finite, there has to be some type of ending to it. Well, in the whole scope of things, you know what, I'm actually turn this over. This is where where you got an opportunity to see some of the things that I was saying in a court setting. And you also had an opportunity to see responses after because I, a lot of times people don't understand line upon line, precept upon precept, there's a process to everything that you do. I will not give you everything. And Mark is one of those people. I, I say he's a smart person and he's an innocent person. That's a problem person because he thinks the world works like it should, when in fact, none of this makes any sense. Nobody goes by law. And in these, even in these contexts, there's a means to get to where you're going to. But if I give him all the information, he'll then try to run with it all at one time and it's not the time for it. So the first things I gave you were a few things to say, hey, this file this, Let's get this the process you, started. Right. This is what we're doing to get the process started. And and that 
when the first thing I gave you was a presentment for starting the divorce, and it was to your estranged wife now. Right. So uh, this, this, this is one of the things I, I didn't hear you say, Richard, which is so powerful. As guys go through these divorce processes, and for people that are not divorced, they're on the outside looking in, one of the things that we say that we recognize is that men uh, come through divorces on the whole uh, very badly. They're losing a lot. Oh, yes. 75 percent. Yes. 75 percent. Men lose the divorce decree or uh, proceeding 75 percent of the time. 75 percent of the time. Let's get out of 100 people, 75 percent lost. And when they lose, they're losing 65 percent of their wealth. And one of the things that uh, I'm sure I'm not gonna be alone on. One of the reasons it hurts so much to lose that much wealth is because that wealth represents our time, our effort, and everything we've been able to, to put together over those years. And uh, that becomes a serious problem. You, you wanna talk about feeling butthurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's getting hurt. So, uh, and oh, okay. Let me let me jump in real quick because when we spoke about that, what yesterday, I gave him two examples because you have to understand the other side of it because you see guys like Elon Musk. Elon Musk got divorced and he cut a check for like six billion dollars. That was less than ten percent of his income. So he's he's in the twenty five percent that technically he won because he did not lose sixty five percent of his income. Tiger Woods cut a check in a courtroom. He did not lose 65% of his income. But I told him, the ones that are winning are wealthy. That's the truth. They are uber wealthy. And it's going through a context of even understanding that concept. Because, yes, I made this money. Michael Jordan, he cut a check for Juanita for $65 million. Michael Jordan at the time was worth $32, $302 million, and then he had another $100 million coming in from Nike. He didn't lose 65% of his income. He is uber wealthy. Shaq, Shawnee is very well off. Shaq didn't lose 65% of his income. You have to look at it because, again, you're not seeing guys that don't make, like, the average was $50,000 for a couple. That wasn't one person. Yeah. That's two people in a house. And you understand that people are living paycheck to paycheck. So we're looking at the average, what is that? The average person in America, what, 65% or 67% of people in America are making less than, or right above the poverty level, which is $17,000. So now you got two people and both of them, let's say he's making 33, she's making 17. He's losing 65% of that 33 understand that that's that's what we're talking about that's where the effect is coming from that's where those large ass numbers are coming from because that 65 is not coming from a tiger woods it's not coming from an elon musk it's not coming from a michael jordan it's coming from a space of uh john it's coming from a place of mark it's coming from a place of richard that's 35 and a 50 collective because let's say she's a homemaker I'm not saying she doesn't deserve anything, but if I'm giving you $25,000 and I make 50, that hurts. But if I'm giving you 35 and I make 50, that is, that's one of those things that injures a person's soul. Because that 35, a lot of times that doesn't include the extra with child support. That doesn't include the monthly payments that I still have to give you from um, alimony, which a lot of times men are paying this even after a woman is married. Or a woman will actually delay remarrying simply because she still has this check as long as she's not attached to someone else. And those are the things, because that was one of the things I actually pointed out to him. It was like, hey, I want to give her this. Hold on, we're going to put an end to this. <laughs> I said, let's do 12 months. He's like, nah, I'm gonna do a little bit. Uh, let's do two years. We got we got to put a stop on it. 
because, and then I actually put a cohabitation. Damn, damn if she gets married. If she has a cohabitation agreement with anybody, hey, well, this is cut off. Somebody's there. And there are certain things that people are paying for that I don't feel should be paid for because I, I almost got personal for me. But if me, if there's two people in the house, two adults in the house, there shouldn't have to be a third person to aid in that house, even if that third person is not part of that house. Those two adults should be able to pay for everything in that house. Mm -hmm. So with me, it's the understanding of if we're gonna take two, yes, the partnership has gotta make it, but that partnership has to be beneficial for both sides. So it shouldn't incorporate a third party to complete their partnership. And that's one of the things that I tried to bring up with him because again, you're going into something that you didn't plan on. And then even if you planned on it, you're still not trying to do this forever. So there has to be some type of ending to it. But I, you know, after, after and, giving and, and, okay. and, and that's one of the things you said, Richard, is that you shouldn't have to do this forever. But the way the courts are deciding this. Absolutely. Is people are doing this to the day they die, which in my opinion, for the most part, for most of these cases, absolutely not. Because now instead of, you, basically what it is, you've created a dependent. Because even that money, most people don't even get this. The guys that are, the money that they're sending out, they're paying taxes on that money. They're still being taxed on it as if they have the 50,000. Even whenever they only bring it home, 17. They're still and being- can barely live off of what they, off of what's left. And that's why it's funny to me, you see a divorced guy, he's living at home with his mom, and it's because he can't afford to live on his own unless it's somewhere with a crappy car and a crappy apartment. And then now he has to impress another woman. And these are the things where, that's why I think the numbers are so skewed when, uh, yeah, men are getting remarried because they understand the partnership for the most part. The women are becoming dependents because they're saying, okay, if I don't get married, I still got this check coming in. So if I do get married, uh, this check get cut off and there's no guarantee this dude is gonna be here. And it's because again, the mindset has shifted in everything that's being done. And that's pretty much why I'm talking, we have a legal channel and I'm talking about an actual divorce, which is actually is no more than a contract. It's a contract negotiation because the marriage license is a permission for being married, but it's also a negotiation between you and another party. And it's always better to go into an agreement wholeheartedly and knowingly because even my wife, my first wife, um, I knew who she was. She knew who I was. I knew she was pretty. I knew she wasn't gonna stay if the money didn't. So when the money showed up, she left. No problem. The problem was, was the vindictiveness that followed from that. Now, she is a beautiful woman afterwards, but during the process, she was a completely different person that I had no idea who she was. And it got to the point to where you have to say enough is enough. And, and most people don't even know after my first divorce, I was, I was destitute. I was damn near homeless. And even in that context, it's where did I go from there? Did I, did I lose? Yeah, I lost every fucking thing. But at the same time, I understood, okay, if I give her everything now, I don't have to give her anything later. Cool. And I even told him once because he was going through a point of, which we actually got to go back to the beginning. But he was going through something and I said, and it, I started laughing when he said it because it was a high number. And I started laughing and I said, it's amazing. Men will pay a premium for peace. And he, he started smiling, he goes, yeah, you're right. Because that's the one thing, when Tiger cut that check in the courtroom, he was paying for peace. He didn't give a shit about it. When Elon cut the check, he was paying for peace. When Shaq cut the check, they're paying for peace. It's not that they don't love these women. It's not that they, who I'm so happy. No, they're taking off that part of the armor. It's like, okay, now I can relax. Now, because 
I'm even doing something that most of you won't even catch on until later, but I'm doing the series because I always watch these little, a hundred ways to please your man, that's a lie, because men only care about two things, the sex and silence. Because at the end of the day, we want to do, you start yapping, we want to find something for you to shut up so we can have sex. That's it. Cause we can make our own sandwiches. We can do all the other stuff. We just need sex. And I always tell people, it doesn't matter. It's etched in our DNA. The reason why men don't listen to women or can't hear women is cause it's etched in our DNA not to hear y'all until you get to, eh, and now we want to shut you up. That's why men are horrible stewards for children because children learn if I get quiet, I can tear up everything in this house. I can do everything I want because daddy just don't want to hear us. We don't micromanage by choice, but at the end of the day, we're going to do whatever is necessary to make you happy, to keep you quiet. But in the midst of doing that, we will sacrifice everything we have. That's why a lot of times in a marriage, a man transforms who he was to someone that you have no idea who he is or even do you like because we're looking for peace because we want you to be quiet for silence. But now I'm gonna go back because again, there was a presentment that we put together. Right, so so, 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 so so let me start, let, let me start from this perspective to, okay. to, to give people an idea of what's going on. So the start of the, uh, I'm gonna talk about the start of the court process, all right? I'm sitting at, uh, thankfully she moved out. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. See, you, went, you went to speed, you went to speed. Because that's why I want to talk about the presentment. Because the original presentment, I gave you instructions. Well, what I was going to talk right. about right. Was, was, what I, was, was what I was faced with. Okay. So I'm sitting in the house. Okay. And I get a, a, a knock on the door. It's the uh, processor. And she gives me the packet. So I open the packet and it's got uh it's got the divorce stuff in it but here's the one thing that got me <laughs> there was a temporary restraining order against me which is a criminal offense which is a criminal offense and it hurt me i've never done anything to her i've never I, I, I've, I've done my best to do what was good for her and then to see the temporary restraining order. Then I read further, and what she's asking for when when she left the house, the last presentment I uh, presented to her for a divorce agreement, I said I was going to give half of my retirement paycheck for two years. And now in this divorce uh, presentment that she's given to me, she is now saying that she wants a disproportionate amount of my money. And I'm like, Dispro disproportionate amount? Here it is, I've done everything to help you, and now you're gonna put a temporary restraining order on me? I've never been in any kind of trouble. And now, just as Richard said, I've got a criminal action against me. All right, so let's take it from here. Okay, cool. so go what, ahead. Was, what was funny about it was because prior to that, there was there was the silent treatment, there was other things, and I, and I told him I said, look, here's here's one way to make it easier: offer her an opportunity to leave. Since she doesn't want to be there, offer an opportunity to leave, which you did, and he offered, say, here's some money to move, which she chose not to take. Right, I was happy about that. <laughs> he then said, here's a car, you keep that. She then said, I don't want anything else. What she said? said, okay, that's great. Because I told him, I said, and, he, and the funniest thing about the whole thing was, he was like, well, you know, man, I wanna do this. I said, look, the person that you meet in court will not be the sweet woman that's walking out of your house. That's the one thing I told him. So then now he's presented with this criminal matter. And most people don't know, in order to go into a divorce mediation, even here in Texas, it's codified, there must be an agreement 
between both parties to do mediation. Now, here's the thing. I just said that marriage itself is a contract. I even talked about the negotiation within a marriage is a contract. Even going in to negotiate, there is a contract. Well, I'm gonna let now Mark take this over because I told him because... I told him there were gonna be a couple things that happened. But yeah. again, just like I told you before, I did not give him everything. Right. Because it's when I'm handing you this red pill. I can only let you experience it. I'm going to give you a little bit at a time, but you have to experience it because it's not your outsource that's changed. It is actually your mind. Because the perception of, again, as an intelligent person, why are they doing this? Why would they? I can't answer those questions because I'm not them. But I do know the nature of the beast doesn't change because they are doing what they are trained to do. You remember my partner, my police, part, police partner said that? We're doing, we're being punished for doing what we're trained to do. Now I'm gonna actually throw it over here because yeah. it was something that you said to me one day and I couldn't stop smiling. I think my face hurt for a little while. I couldn't talk to you. <laughs> but uh, go ahead. So I, I, okay, hopefully I get to what, to what it was. But here's, here's the deal. I'm going over the, 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 the ground setting stage for this stuff. And as people are listening to this podcast, so many guys are sitting there like, yeah, mm -hmm, I know. That's exactly what happened to me. So now, so now it's the day of the hearing. And we need to understand some stuff first. One, there is a, there is a stark difference between a lawyer slash attorney and a counselor. <laughs> All right, Rich is a counselor to me. One of the biggest things about a lawyer, an attorney, when they take the oath to the bar, they take the oath to protect the court first, the public second, and the, and the client third. never, third. Mm -hmm. you're, you're pretty much never. So if there's a conflict in the court, it goes to the court. Between you and the court, you think the guy you're paying for as your lawyer is there to protect you and he's going to give deference to the court and you're going to lose every day of the week. And most people have no clue that this is going on. So now I'm on the day of the court. Before I got there, I said, Richard, what do I need to do? Knowing that Richard was not gonna be there, okay? And Richard was like, Richard said, I can't remember all that you said, but you said, say this, 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 and only stick to these things. And my favorite word is stay focused. Stay focused, stay focused. And, 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 and it doesn't become apparent until you start really getting in the minutia of what's happening. So I'm going in this and I'm a nice guy. Unfortunately. <laughs> so as I'm going And I just this, want you to know it's a pain in the ass too. I just want you to know that. This is really this is really horrible that you Especially especially for this stuff. Because I'm going into this and I'm sitting here, I'm like, all right, we're playing a gentleman's game. I say something and then they say something back and we it, no. You need to understand. When I walked into this from the very beginning, I put my paperwork in to say that I'm representing myself, pro, what they call pro se. And from the very beginning, there was hostility from the judge. The, the one that's supposed to be mediating all of this, the one that's supposed to be, anyway. So, not really understanding the procedure, I'm like, well, okay, um, the one thing I do remember that you told me to say is, you know, uh, I'm here because this, oh, by the way, the first matter that needed to be uh, dealt with in this court case, the matter that brought me to that court was the temporary restraining order. And Richard said, tell them I'm here because this temporary restraining order brought me here. But of what this is about, I have no clue. In that temporary restraining order, normally 
there's it, it, it details what your what the charges are. Well, that you're being brought it, well here's here's the whole thing about it. Whenever you have any type of criminal action, there is a process to it. It doesn't change just because you're sitting in front of a mediator. But the thing is, they want you to believe that there is something different. So whenever, um, basically, I gave him a structure to stand by. So every time they went to him, he actually stood right there like, well, no, because I'm here for that. When, yeah, you can talk about that, but I'm here for this. Okay, that's cool, but I'm here for this. And it it became to the point to where he kept saying the judge was um, attempting to silence him because it was a Zoom oh, yeah. meeting. Kept, oh, yeah. kept cutting his mic off, kept oh, cutting yeah. his mic and, off. And, 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 mic it's off. Not, and, and the way she silenced him, Mr. Frederick, do not talk over me. I'm like, well, okay, okay, when do I get my chance to talk? Here's, and here's, here's the thing that really happened. I was there for a temporary restraining order. We got into it to this day. I still don't know why uh, the temporary restraining order was brought up against me. I asked that question in court and they ignored me. But here's the, here's the great part about it. When you have a criminal procedure, one of the things that's done here in Texas is codified under Article 39.4, that's the code for discovery. He made he requested a detailed discovery. One is the actual complaint. How is this criminal action set up? And then what is the proof to support this criminal complaint? Those two things. That was the actual detailed discovery. What was funny about it was I then, after they went through the first, because there was one thing I told him to get. Do you remember what that oh, was? Oh, I sure do. What was it I told you to ask for at the end? Because she she went to she went to adjudicating the judge after cutting him off. Went to you're going to pay this. You're going to give that. You're going Wait, to the, do this. Let, let, let me explain this because you our, our perspectives are totally different. Mm -hmm. He's coming from perspective. I know what the heck I'm doing, and I know what they're getting ready to do. I'm coming from the perspective of I'm discovering what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I think a lot of people out there that we're talking to are in the same position I was. We're coming from a perspective of I don't really know what's supposed to happen here, but I'm figuring it out bit by bit. And here's, and here's the sad piece. Because Richard is my counselor, He's a, he is not a bar certified counselor. He's there honestly for me. Because most of you, when y'all go through these divorce proceedings, you have a lawyer. She has a lawyer, you have a lawyer. They're both bar certified and they're there for the court. So you won't see the hostility that I saw because both of them are like, oh, hi, John, how are you today? It's good, Bob, good to see you. And and that's actually the reference I gave him and we were I was telling him the whole thing that I actually like to use is um, from four brothers he spoke about having an out of town shooter I would be the one that would be an out of town shooter one because I'm not a part of their their little club I'm not a part of that so there's no benefit or actually repercussion for me for being outside of that I'm not inside their little club so I don't have to participate in their foolery mm -hmm. so at that same time so as they, as he said you pay an out of town shooter to get do the job and then get back out of town. That's why I'm an outsider. I don't have to fool around. They don't, I don't hang around in their, their circles. I'm outside of it. And that's one of the things that's like you say, I am your advocate. I do work for your benefit because I'm going to give you the best advice for winning. That's all I care about is you. I don't care about the court. I have no allegiance to the court. I have no loyalty to the court. I have no card. I'm not paying any dues to the court. So that's what he's talking about when he speaks about that. And, and, and again, one of the things that I think that you're gonna find so interesting, you got a lot of guys out there that, that have gone through this divorce proceedings and they, they were destroyed. Absolutely. And they still don't know what happened. Absolutely. Because of my unusual perspective, I'm gonna show you what happened, okay? So, didn't discuss anything concerning the 
uh, temporary restraining order. Went straight into the divorce hearing. And I'm like, what? Well, hey, where are we going? And the next thing I know, the lawyer for my wife is presenting information. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Sabina is, she has this, blah, 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 blah. And we get to the end of it. Oh, by the way, to answer that question that you that, that you asked me, what did you ask me to get? It's going south. It ain't good. <laughs> I text Richard, like, Richard, it's not going good. He's like, get us ask for a signed copy of the judge's disposition and the court. Uh, reporter's record. I'm like, fantastic, I'll do that. So I, I ask, kind of like in the middle of the, uh, of, of the procedures, and I go to ask for this stuff and I'm shut down. Thinking we're playing a gentleman's game. Thinking I'm going to get a chance to do this, right? So we start going through this and she, she's dividing my checkup. I say she, I had a female judge, okay? So the judge is dividing my check up. And this is a temporary portion, right? I'm supposed to pay my wife, ex-wife, $500 a month. Um, uh, pay for her lawyer. Can you imagine paying for somebody to fight you? <laughs> That's one of the dumbest things. I'm supposed to pay him uh, whatever his court fees, his fees are, $1,000. And then um, th there was an outstanding uh, bill that we had, and I'm supposed to pay that all by myself. And uh, and I'm looking, and the question I'm asking, and I know it's the question y'all are asking too, is how is the judge coming up with this figure I'm supposed to pay? Because keep in mind, he hasn't disclosed a dime to her. I haven't disclosed anything. Because he was there for a temporary restraining order. But watch this. This is one of the things that Richard said. This is afterward. In fact, let me just let me just close out the let me just close out the first hearing, okay? So Richard told me to get the, 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 the judge's signed disposition and a copy of the court report. So um, Hold on. So he they close out the Zoom meeting, he calls me in a panic. Yeah, and I, <laughs> oh, hold on, we're not about to get to that. So, 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 so she said, do you have anything else you want to say? And I said, I said, oh, oh yeah, because I'm unfamiliar with the term, so I'm kind of reading it, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to need a copy of your uh, signed disposition. And all right, um, uh, all right, dispositions are closed, going like, click. I'm like, hung up on She just hung up on me. I'm, I'm in the middle of saying what I got to say. I said, Richard, she hung up on me. He said, do you know why she hung up on you? I said, no, why did she hang up on me? He said, because he, she knew what you were getting ready to ask. She knew I was getting ready to ask for a judge's, for her signed disposition and the court report. And she knew I was getting ready to hold her feet to the fire. Now, here's the thing I always say. One thing in human nature is self-preservation. <laughs> and I told him, I said, that question that was on the record now allows her to cover her own ass. I said, now she's going to determine if she's going to be liable. And I said, I have yet to meet a judge that will put themselves on the line for a, an attorney. Now, go into the second hearing. I give him a couple motions. Oh, but first, first okay. before we get to the second hearing and, 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 and see... Let me tell you, let me tell you what I saw. Most of the time, because you've got a lawyer representing you, you sit back and you wait for him to ask the question. I'm the guy in the first person shooter here. I'm the guy asking the questions and I'm asking what's on my mind. And one of the questions I'm asking is, hey, how, why? And I ask this repeatedly, <laughs> it's a problem in this court. Why did you bring into the why did you bring the temporary restraining order against me? Do you know what her lawyer actually said? Her lawyer actually said, "Oh, we do this to everybody." I'm like, you, now, you do this to how you see? Go ahead. We're going we're going to go back in time. <laughs> I I informed him again with the original presentment. I said, "Look, because if she files 
they're going to file a TRO against you. I said, I got a defense for it. However, he goes, well, she wouldn't do that. I said, they're going to do that. Now, fast forward, they switched places because he was the original filer. They closed out his case, flipped it to make the wife the filer. And what did they do? Filed a temporary restraining order on her. Really? No, I'm not. Just Nostradamus. I understand this because, again, the nature of the beast doesn't change. So when, they, when he saw that, he saw that there is no spoon. His mind started to expand. He started to see the world differently. The should. He goes through the first proceeding. He sees the should. He also sees everything that I was telling him. Now, after the proceeding, he was in panic mode, but he didn't realize words had power. Goes into the second proceeding. He still does not have the judge's signed disposition. No, on the first one, we had the judge's signed disposition. That's how we were able to do the rest of what we did. No, 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 no. You haven't gotten a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can't get this position until the first one's over with. Right, right. So we still don't have it, and we're going to the third hearing. Third hearing. Now, keep in mind, he asked for it at the end of the first one. She hung up on it. The second one, tell them tell, tell them the, oh, 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 the attitude oh. change that you oh. recognize from two motions that I gave you from that first hearing, and also speak about this disposition. So, that the judge was supposed to hand you that you don't have. Let's talk about it. So going into the second hearing, totally different. After I got off the first hearing, Richard was like, did you think they were just going to let you talk? I'm like, <laughs> I tried not to look stupid, but I was like, well, I kind of did think that. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, mom, got it. But also understand this. See, most people don't understand. This is the other thing you said too, Richard. You said, look, this is the way we're going forward. You said there has to be evidence presented for both a criminal procedure and both a civil procedure. The temporary restraining order, and most people don't understand that the temporary restraining order is a criminal offense. And they sweep it under the rug by bringing you in to, uh, under the temporary restraining order never hearing about it, never saying anything about it. And, at the, and, and as a result, you think that temporary restraining order went away. Well, here's where most people are getting slaughtered when it comes to it. They're getting something like a temporary restraining order, Maybe not a temporary restraining order, but something that does the same function as the temporary restraining order. Then the judge goes in and assesses how much you owe, and what she's doing is she's taking the temporary restraining order and she's using it against you in terms of how much she's assessing that you pay. Basically, he's talking about they're using that to cover for harmless error. Because, well, I had this temporary restraining order in front of me, that's why I went to this. That's why I levied this high 65% of his income. And nobody's gonna, and, and at the end of the day, when all of this divorce stuff is, is done, nobody's ever gonna ask, well, what was the temporary restraining order for? Nobody's ever gonna ask that question. But all they're gonna look at and be like, you had a temporary restraining order against you. That's why all this stuff happened. Mm -hmm. And so, our lawyer, in talking to my ex-wife, soon to be ex-wife's lawyer, he literally said, we always do this. And watch this. See, this is where the detriment comes in with you having a bar certified lawyer. His uh, oath is to the system. So he's seeing it all happen and he's not doing anything to stop it. And most of the time, up until what we're talking about now, you had no clue that this was happening. So we get to the second hearing. Oh, oh, it's on. Filed a couple of motions. <laughs> Filed a couple of motions. And let me tell you what. One of the things you said, Richard, was, look, we're positioning ourselves to sue the judge. All right. And right now, my ex-wife's. Attorney, that guy's a jackass, doesn't know what the heck he's getting himself into. 
No, we're gonna get into that. We ain't gonna name. Oh, we're gonna okay. get into that. Okay, we're gonna get into that. Because here's the, here's the one thing I I want you to understand with the simple fact that just like we said, one he wasn't gonna get the disposition, which he did not. I also told him she was going to throw her attorney under the bus. Now, go ahead. So, now coming into this, oh, by the way, Richard also said when the, when the judge said you pay her $500 <laughs> and all this stuff, Richard said, you don't pay her nothing until I tell you to. I said, I said all right, Richard, You're, hey, I trust you. And I, I ain't paying her nothing. And let me tell you what, this divorce hearing still is not over. But to this day, you think she's gotten one penny out of me? No, she hasn't. And, and this is the, why. Here's the great part about it. Going into the second hearing, I gave him three phrases. I do not consent. I do not, I do agree. not agree. I do not consent. And I'm here for the TRO. Let me tell I you. I have no evidence from the TRO. I'm here for the TRO because that's what's on the title of the transcript, that's what's on this paperwork, that's what I'm here for. I did not agree to the mediation because again, remember the contract. They tried to use his agreement for trial as they, as he so eloquently placed it into another motion. I do not agree. I do not consent to move forward because again, remember I tell you, you are the most powerful person sitting in the courtroom. You have to offer consent or there has to be a judge's order. The judge can't give an order until you give them permission to. Yeah. Whoops. So now. So now we're in the second hearing. All right. It's totally different. So the first thing, Richard, look, I want you to know to this day, we still haven't left. Um, uh, I, I, I still haven't received discovery for this temporary restraining order. So we're here in the second hearing. And this time, um, I hadn't given any money paid the lawyer nothing and uh my ex-wife hold on i'm actually gonna throw something else in there because it's, it's funny so remember we actually started off talking about he was giving her the car she has the car come to find out there's a extra set of keys that was left at his property knows i'm using the words his property the funny thing is he's giving her the car the keys are there simply because it's put on a sheet of paper, understanding what consent implies, because they can use this word implied consent. If he gives her those keys because it's written in a quote unquote order or a motion, he has now consented to the entire motion. Understand that. So I told him, no, do not hand those keys over. And when it's time, I'll give you a process to do so. Understand that any type of consent that you offer, even if it's minuscule, that will become implied consent. These are things that are done in law. You're either all the way in or you're all the way out. There is no in between. You can't get a little bit pregnant in this. The law does not care about your side. Nobody gives a shit. They get made an allegation by flipping it around. They now have to prove everything that they said. The problem is, this is what they normally do. But this yeah, is, right. yeah, he's getting ready to give you the tee -hee that I actually enjoyed, which made my face hurt. Because what did her lawyer say after you kept saying, I don't consent, I don't agree, we can't move forward, I'm on this TRO? He was like, he, 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 so, so, so first of all, we get into this thing, and he's, and he's, and he's, and he's, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, ma'am, um, your Honor, we sent this. We sent these requests in. He hasn't replied to not one of the requests and think that I sent him. And he said, "I'm not asking that uh, he he received jail time for a contempt of court." And uh, the judge says, "Well, I'm not sure we can give him. I have to see if he's if, if he's uh, 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 got money. I can't remember the term she used." And I said, "Hold on here. Ain't nobody going to jail." But hold on, I want you. I want you also to pay attention to that. He said, I'm not asking for him to go to jail for contempt of court. Remember, I did an entire podcast talking about a judge placing someone in contempt of court. I also spoke about in order for the judge to be able to do that, because again, you have to consent to it, that there has to be a prior agreement in place. And there's not been. You know what would have allowed him to be placed in contempt, her signed 
this position, which he still does not have. That's why she used it and said, I don't know if I can. But I'm going to back up because I believe a little while back, someone told me the judge is the most powerful person in the court and they can do what they want to. How is it that she's sitting here now, the judge, and she doesn't think she has the ability to? Yeah. If she's all powerful, how is she not all able? Yeah. Go and, ahead. And, go and, ahead. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm off the chain now because I understand how this, how this system works. I understand how this game is played. So right now she's like, I, I like, hold on, ain't nobody going to jail here. The first thing that we need to deal with is this motion that Richard has given me, which upends the entire court, lays out everything, every criminal act. I'm telling you criminal act that the judge did and they tried to ignore it. So they're going on and saying, this is supposed to be, oh, by the way, guys, this second hearing was supposed to be the final hearing. <laughs> this, this, this is the one where I was supposed to get done. Like everybody else, 65% of my wealth. So we're sitting here and they're trying to go on with the, with the civil divorce case. And I said, I do not agree, I do not consent. I'm talking over the judge. He said, Mr. Frederick, do not talk over me. I said, I do not agree, I do not consent. The first thing we need to do is we need to deal with this with, with, with this motion that's on the table that y'all don't want to deal with. And I went through the whole thing. I was talking over her. I had, I, man, I hijacked that dog on court. And see, this is where y'all are not gonna do if y'all got somebody else sitting in the seat in front of you. I hijacked that court to the point where I wouldn't let them say anything because what they were trying to do is they were trying to set the case up against me. And I knew that we couldn't go any further because we had to deal with the temporary restraining order before we dealt with anything going forward with the civil divorce case to the point where <laughs> she said, Mr. Frederick, I'm going to have the bailiff mute you. <laughs> and I'm and, and, and I, as we're on Zoom, and I don't for, for those that don't know, if you hit the space bar on the on, on Zoom, you can unmute yourself. So I'm sitting there. So so the, so the bailiff is muting me, and every time he mutes me, I'm sitting there. I'm like, I do not agree. I do not consent. Whole thing, basically at the bottom line. But is, hold on, hold on, because you missed something. What I missed? What did her attorney say when the judge asked him? directly about your actions <laughs> that because this is the, that's the one that had me i was i was tickled as the as the old folk i was tickled guys you, you're, you're seeing me and i'm laughing because i do have the upper hand right now and you can laugh because you got the upper hand okay so now i remember i hadn't given the, the lawyer's from the time the first hearing to the second hearing, he's steadily sending me stuff, pay me, pay me, there's my fee, da, 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 and I didn't answer him nothing. So. Actually, you did answer, you just didn't respond directly to what he was doing. So, each motion is an answer. Just keep that in mind. Gotcha. A motion is an answer, but they were not directed at, the, they were indirectly answering the things he was presenting him with. Because you always want to answer what's presented. But he didn't realize those things that he was presenting was used as evidence of his criminal activities. But the one thing that I was trying to get you to- Oh no, I'm, to, getting, okay. I'm getting ready to say it. Because it got to the point where he, he's talking to the Lord, he's talking to the judge like, ma'am, I've never seen anything like this. He won't respond to anything I send him. I'm like, boy, well, you're a jackass. <laughs> and I'm just so excited that he had no understanding and here's one of the things to keep in mind, folks. When these, it was one of the things that you said when we first started. These people do not know law. In fact, that motion for the second one, <laughs> the first thing that, 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 that Richard put on that thing, he said, this is a matter of law. law. And I was like, oh my God. 
that's one of the most, that's like one of the most uh, important pieces in this entire motion because everything Richard listed in that motion was about law and these people, your lawyers, both your lawyers and, and the judges for the most part don't know law. They know the procedures that they normally go through time after time, which is not, in most cases, certainly not in mine, is not law. And the funniest part about this, because um, we're going to start wrapping it up a little bit, but the funniest part about that was, he comes to me, Mark says, well, I don't understand this. I said, what is it? He said, well, why didn't he just read the motions? You wrote the organic code on there. <laughs> now, people think I say stupid shit just to be saying it. When I read the law of numbers, they come from somewhere. Somebody did the service. When I talk about people don't read a book after high school, that includes lawyers. That includes judges. When I say a judge is not going to read a complaint that's over eight pages, guess what they're not doing? Reading a complaint that's over eight pages. Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who did it? Why they did it? What did you want? Let's go on to the next one. We're not, I'm not gonna go through all this. Nobody cares. 90% of people don't care you have a problem. 10% of people, glad you got them because they're probably the ones who gave them to you. Understand what this is. So whenever he was, he was asking that, it was simple. Each one of his motions are one page. I think one is two pages. That's it. The question that was asked was, why didn't he just read the organic code? The code that he's actually been supposed to practice by for the past X, Y, Z years. That no it. That no not. But whenever I say something, I don't know what I'm talking about. But everything that you even heard, not even from me, everything that's being illustrated and laid out in front of you, it's coming from somewhere. But now the confusion is why? Because he's presenting law. He's tied the judge's hand because the judge is not going to turn over the, the dis signed disposition where she violated his rights. And that's proof. She's not going to fall on the sword for this idiot. And guess what? Since she didn't, I went ahead and threw this jackass under the bus. Because the next step was, okay, this is a criminal action and it's a federal action. And, and I, used, I used a word that was pretty much easily identifiable. Actors in concert in a continued action. So if they continue on with him, he's using extortive tactics because he keeps sending them stuff. He's basing it on something that no one has, which is the judge's signed disposition. The judge is not going to sign that. That's true. Because he's even asked me about uh, 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 what was another case that he was dealing with. And he said, well, how do I stop them from doing, you know, messed up stuff? I said, ask for that judge to sign this position. Because when they have to put their name on it, it becomes something different. And because even with that, you can actually just give give the flip side of that one because you had a case that um, you were doing another case. Oh my God! And they were this doing whole, it on your this own. whole this whole court system is corrupt. This whole court system is very corrupt. So I had a I had a traffic ticket that I was dealing with, and I went into the uh, I went into that to that court hearing, different judge, different court, and. Uh, 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 basically, um, what I was asking for, they couldn't give it to me. And out of that one, the judge actually said to the bailiff, get him out of here. And I was telling Richard what happened, and Richard's He's like, like, yeah, I won, I won, I won. Oh, yeah, yeah, I won. <laughs> it's like, it's like, hey, you better check to see if they, if they, um, uh, 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 set up another hearing. Set up another hearing. And I, that day, I went, I checked, sure enough, Another hearing was set up, and from everything, received I'm no notice. Received absolutely no notice. And let me tell you what was getting ready to happen. Re what was getting ready to happen because I received because they set up a hearing, and there was a hearing on the docket. I received no notice of that hearing. I wouldn't have been there, but because I went to the court clerk and said, "Hey, what's going on with this case?" They told me I will be there. And I'll have other uh, other stuff to back up what I'm there with. And 
that's one of the things that you actually have an opportunity because again, you have an out of town shooter when you're dealing with me. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully we'll have some more stories. Definitely we'll have Mark back on and see you guys in a couple of days. And I'm just telling you, I'm so, most people will not say they're excited. I'm not excited about the divorce, but doggone it. I'm excited about my position. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, All right. Thank you guys. Out.